All right, that was our driver. He pretty much abandoned us. This is just absolute chaos now. Oh my God. Is that the craziest the water's ever been? No, it was yesterday. Yesterday, Oh yeah. my God. Oh my God, land. Land. You guys ever been to Albania? To most people, the small Balkan country of Albania might not be the most obvious destination for travel. Check this out. Its more popular neighbors like Croatia, Montenegro, and Greece seem to get most of the limelight. While they share the same Adriatic waters as these neighbors, we're eager to find out whether they keep their beaches and cities as well maintained and their infrastructure navigation up to par compared to their bordering nations that receive far more tourists. They must have a decent infrastructure for that here. Total construction. There's a lot of trash. This dock is a little dodgy. Half of it just went underwater. Hey. Albania's bad reputation as a crime-ridden nation is hard to shake. Over the past decade, Albanian crime groups have overtaken all rivals to become some of the most crucial players in global drug trafficking. Today, the communist dictatorship will still considered one of the most repressive and bloodiest regimes of contemporary history. Ruled for 40 years by a wicked and paranoid dictator, Enver Hoxha, it's had a very dramatic past to say the least. Traces of this dark period can be found everywhere, the representation in Hollywood films hasn't helped either. We're shipping a large quantity of ammunition from Albania to Afghanistan. <laughs> this brutal authoritarian communist regime lasted almost 40 years and closed off Albania from the rest of the world. Literally nobody was allowed to leave and no one internally trusted each other. So just imagine the level of paranoia and fear in people's hearts. Thousands of microphones were hidden across the country in order to detect any activity viewed as unlawful. But ever since the fall of communism and death of Enver Hoxha, Albania has been actively rebuilding and innovating itself, from new big city developments, even down to our small Airbnb in Tirana. But it looks like we've made it to Middle Earth, yo. What? Welcome to the Shire. The realm of the Middle Earth. <laughs> what is happening? With a population of just under 3 million, there were a few shocking facts about Albania that immediately stood out to us. One, it has the highest number of coffee shops per capita in the world. There's literally a coffee shop on every corner. Two, Albania is the most bunkered country in the world. What is it like in there, dude? I'm currently inside an Albanian bunker in the city of Toronto. What? Having over 173,000 bunkers due to their fear of invasion post-World War II, all in preparation for a massive war that never came. This bunker was built as a refuge for dictator Enver Hoxha and his entourage in the event of a nuclear attack. And three, who knew the Albanian Riviera had so many stunning beaches? We had no idea. So in this video, we're going to be answering the big question we had, and the one you may be asking yourself. Is it worth traveling to Albania now? Does their tourist infrastructure hold up compared to their more established neighbors? Well, we're getting our sea legs today, boys. This is the trash situation right outside of our apartment. We'll be taking you through Saranda, Flora, and Tirana, and sharing our raw sentiments on the ground. La sera anche lavorare come barman. <laughs> Who would have thought that Italian would get you so far in Albania? Yeah, buddy. We've made it to the Albanian Riviera, dude. Pretty nice. Before coming to Albania, I didn't really know much about it. I still don't, I guess. We're learning, we just got here. But I would say it wasn't known as like the safest place to come and be. I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. So I think the tourism wasn't super high. Well, in the last five to 10 years, that's changed, you know? Good old Instagram, these great reels and TikToks that you see that are just making this place look like pristine. Seriously, what is this place? This is heaven. We're excited to kind of see what it's about, especially coming from Corfu, Greece. It's very similar waters. And it's literally a 30 minute ferry ride away. Wait, no way. This is what we're about to get on? It looks more like a submarine than it does a boat. It's interesting, we're in a very local neighborhood that's definitely under extreme development, like construction everywhere. Wow, this is all around the neighborhoods that we're staying in. See, you can see these lines going. Some places I don't know if it's necessarily safe to walk, it's but- It's also bizarre because like our apartment, our, our, where we're staying is like super modern, kind of luxurious. Yeah. <laughs> Oh 
nice it's a place for sure that you can come and have maybe a an affordable yeah, vacation perfect. we're in a really good location though we're right down the street from this took us literally two minutes to walk here and we have a great gym you found us a great gym nathan <laughs> that like has this ocean view and again i think we're paying like 12 or 14 euros for a week pass, which is like unheard of so far on our trip this year. That's like the cheapest membership we've paid for. We have a great little coffee shop down the street called Magic Blue. They actually, nobody here really makes flat whites, but if you ask for a double cappuccino, it's pretty damn close. And we have a spa near us. So I think we're really well situated, but look. You can see this little like cement staircase that these kids are jumping off of. And again, we're back to stone beaches, which I actually have been loving because Sand just gets in all the crevices, you know you get dirtier. All right, so we've been going hard on the Albanian food. Damn, is it delicious, but also pretty heavy and rich. My inner stomach is wanting some vitamins, okay? Juice cleanse. <laughs> all I'm doing, I'm drinking juices for a week straight. Just ginger, <laughs> lime, diarrhea like water. Never know. Sometimes when we're traveling, it's hard to find balanced meals and nutrient dense foods. We do our best to work out regularly. In most cities, we do invest in a gym membership, but sometimes we feel like we're not getting a proper diet. That's when we'll mix in AG1. AG1 is a daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. I'll be honest, we're typically not supplement people. We're big on eating whole foods. But if we're moving a lot, which is all the time, and we need extra help, we love this stuff. It's actually insane how many nutrient boxes this little bag of powder checks and how we feel after a week of taking it. The big factor that convinced us to try AG1 was how committed they are to the science and understanding how our bodies actually absorb these nutrients. AG1 is committed to sourcing high quality ingredients and continuously optimizing their formula, which they've already done over 52 times since 2010. And hey, if Tim Ferriss and Andrew Huberman give their stamp of approval, that's a pretty legit endorsement. So if you wanna try out AG1, click the link in our description below and you'll get a free one year supply of AG Vitamin D3 K2 plus five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. Found ourselves a little private beach. Water's pretty clear, I must say. I saw one fish. Water temperature is perfect, and I feel like this little beach that's hidden in between two restaurants is, you know, a lot less people. I will say, the water actually, it's like perfect temperature, but it's a little dirty fish. Yeah, I mean, being on this main strip, I think you're gonna find a little bit more trash and debris and things from like having such a volume of tourists. Yeah. What is also interesting is like the type of people here are different than the type of people in Corfu. I feel like there's different tourists here. There's oh, definitely, true, yeah. there's a lot of Italians. Like there's so many Italians here. There was a lot of Italians in Corfu though too. That's true. But there's like <laughs> mostly Italians and I say there's some here German, I hear a little bit of French. We have yet to try a good restaurant here. So we'll have to yeah. do that tonight. Man. Should I put a little chili on there? What? <laughs> One little chili for me. What is Albanian food? A Chivap chiki. <laughs> meat skewers. I don't know yet. We'll find out. But what you can see, unfortunately, is the trash and like just like not cleaned very well. That's one thing, you know, eventually maybe they'll make a lot of money in tourism and they'll dedicate a little bit more money to cleaning the city, you know? So this is one thing you do see kind of often throughout the city is there's a lot of trash and this smells absolutely putrid. Good portions. And a good view, look at that. Yeah, yogurt, cheese, and garlic combination. It's fire. It is so, so good. good. It's perfectly charred. Ooh, 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 ooh. Lemon that shit up, dude. Mustard sauce, huh? And I love the tentacles. These are my faves, these little guys right oh here. Oh my god. These spooky little critters. <laughs> Keeping it simple, but it's a killer meal, and I think this is gonna run us about maybe 40, 40 bucks. That was one of the things I was a little bit nervous about, if I'm honest, coming to Albania was actually traveling around this country. See ya. 
Dude, that was the most challenging car ride I've had in a long time. Crazy turns, and he was driving like a bat out of hell. Like, no fucks. We made it, Nathan. We made it, dude. Right, dude. For us to get from Sarande to Vlore, we <laughs> it was gonna be a nightmare bus. We read all these reviews, all these blogs about people taking these buses. We had been traveling around Albania by uh, coach and buses, but we've had some really horrible experiences on the coaches. So the main issue is they don't put the AC on and it's absolutely scorching right now, like 35 degrees. So we've been on four coaches and all four were the same. Yeah, you're, you're basically in like a sauna and that's why we decided to get a car. And because they make stops along the way and so many stops, you don't really know how long it's gonna take. And we have experienced that once in Montenegro and it was definitely I wouldn't like to do that again if I have the choice. We did end up booking a private car and luckily they were able to find another couple which seems to be such the norm here. Like yeah, split, it'll be much more yeah, affordable. And by the way, we're actually doing that when we leave here to then go to Tirana. That's glory. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, this is our first little glimpse into their beach. First thing we noticed, they got sand. So no more little stones. Another thing we noticed is walking up. The water here is definitely not as blue and really as clean for the most part. And there, in some spots there's a little bit of a smell, but it's mainly on the outskirts of the beach, like first walking up. Yeah, I mean, today's a Friday and there's a lot of locals here. Like, I think majority of these people are locals or at least Albanian, maybe coming from other cities. This kind of feels like Miami a little bit. We got the ocean, it's a nice little boardwalk area to walk, some nice restaurants. This city for me has such a different vibe from Sarande. Now I feel like Sarande kind of felt like a place that blew up really, really fast and is definitely more catered to like a tourist. Where here, it feels like a much more livable city. It's much bigger, there's more population here as well. Yeah. Um, and it also feels like the infrastructure of getting around is a lot better. Like Saranda felt, how do I say this? Almost like it was a front, like what you see up on the surface looks nice, but it, once you dig a little deeper, there's not much depth or substance there. And honestly, there was a part of me, and maybe I'm reading into this too much, that thought that <laughs> locals are a little bit fed up with the tourists. Yeah. I don't know. Oh no. Look at this. They got courts right next to the ocean. Basketball courts, tennis, and then soccer down there. All right, we found our beach. Yeah, I think here's good. This feels great. Wow, the further down you go, the more beautiful it's gotten. So our Airbnb host recommended we come to this beach. I approve. Yeah. <laughs> this place at night is probably lit. Dude, it's lit. Dude, it's popping. This is Albania, what? They like to rage out here. <laughs> every summer every year they do these fairs you got the ferris wheel you got the the ship that goes back and forth and they be screaming like crazy these albanians looks fun this is the trash situation right outside of our apartment it's just wild and it stinks a major reason we came to albania was to enjoy the water and to get a little more bang for our buck well that's exactly what we got on this boat tour. What we thought would be the chillest, most relaxing day. The water today is the flattest it's been, and it's so blue. <laughs> Basically turned out to be one of the most insane we've had all year. All right, we're on our boat. This is so wild. It is so choppy out here. This boat company is the highest rated in Vlora. 40 euros for an all day trip on the beautiful blue water with free drinks and beer included but the water conditions paired with the blasting house music. Oh my God. Is that the craziest the water's ever been? No, it was yesterday. Yeah, that sort of scared the shit out of me. We got unlucky with the waves, but we also weren't given a heads up. All of the boat companies were out in it. And actually, none of the passengers were told. I don't think any boat company in the US would have run on a day like this. Oh my God, we made it. That was a rough journey, my guy. You don't have to worry about the Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, I almost shit myself three times, but who's counting? But once our expectations were set straight, the day was framed as an adventure, and we had a good time. We got to see this beautiful cave, a very strange island with abandoned Soviet buildings. So this place is called 
Thousand Island. Thousand Island dressing. Wow, just like totally abandoned. Say, hey, there's not much other than these like abandoned buildings, like these communist flats. You're not seeing really anything. Like the guy said, you can't buy food here, so if you're hungry, you gotta wait. I don't think you can get water or anything, but there are a lot of stray dogs roaming around. Yeah. And the highlight of the entire day, with one more challenge to get to it. See you later. Four. Four, okay. This island, where the water was perfect. Yeah, thank you. The pain. Oh, go ahead. We survived. Oh, yeah. I told you we were going to dance. So. <laughs> oh, we did dance on the waves. That is true. I didn't realize it, it came with the chiropractic adjustment. <laughs> good morning, Chi Chi's. that back corner we got a walking tour this morning i love these walking tours i just love learning about a city properly not reading a blog but being here in person and having a local that i can ask all these questions we got a tourist group here we got a tourist group there we got a tourist group everywhere which one do we belong to do let's learn about the big t all right, just wrapped up our walking tour and I gotta say I learned a ton because I was, you know, I don't, I don't wanna say I didn't know anything going in, but I, didn't, I knew very little. So hearing about their decades of Stalinist rule was really eye-opening. And on top of that, you know, being only three decades removed from that brutal communist regime, it feels kind of strange and, and interesting to be here as a tourist because I feel like they haven't been open to tourism for that long. And so walking around the city and seeing sort of a lot of the remains and the statues and the things that are paying sort of tribute to their history, just shedding insight for people that are visiting to know more about it is, is just, yeah, I, I thought it was awesome and I learned a lot. And I feel like I gotta say something about their flag. Like their flag just looks badass. It's just all red, got these like two, is it a two headed eagle or some kind? <laughs> yeah. But it just looks like something out of mean, like kind of. Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones or something. It just has this really cool look to it. It's just been so fascinating us doing this whole tour, like starting in Helsinki, making our way through the Baltics and now into the Balkans. I, I didn't know that there was such a history of communism and a lot of them being a part of like the Soviet Union. In school, I wasn't a big history buff. I actually hated history. It was my most hated class. But now like when you travel to these places and you get to meet actual locals who are showing you the real thing, it's definitely more fascinating and I definitely don't take it for granted. I feel like I could live here for three months. It feels very safe. There's a ton of options of food and cafes and parks and it's clean. And yeah, the people are charming and friendly. Yeah, I'd say the Albanian hospitality is what stands out the most. Yeah. You know, obviously, like any major city, this is a capital city. There's always a few shady characters, but you know what? Going to Paris, going to Budapest, same thing. <laughs> Where are we going this morning, Nathan? Skopje, North Macedonia. And this is our bus. <laughs> Looks pretty run down. Very tight, there's not a lot of leg room. But I don't think there should be many people. So far on his list, he's got six people on this whole bus. I think we're gonna probably have more, but yeah. It's kind of a weird, man. Bus stations and train stations, you always find interesting characters, man. And it's just like a little bit, especially when you're in a foreign place like Albania where not many people speak English, I'd say. It's kind of a little bit of a, you always track down, I just track down the young guy because the younger generation speaks a lot more English and the older generation speaks a lot more Italian. So hopefully we get to our destination. No, we will. No, but I will say this bus is probably the nastiest bus I've ever been on. But that's okay. You got, this has maybe been cleaned once in its life. These seats are looking a little run down. Okay? But we're going to make it. I'm just happy it's a big bus because, like, 
I feel for like the people that travel in these smaller buses where they don't have AC and stuff. Yeah. We'll have AC. Hopefully. Ich war in Austauschschule vor ein Jahr. Austauschschule? Austauschschule, ja. In 2008. We made it to Macedonia. Bye. All right, that was our driver. He pretty much abandoned us at a random other bus station about an hour away. But he was kind enough to buy us all three yes. French tickets. I'm pretty sure he was supposed to take us the whole way. But according to you, he has another trip to Turkey. He has a personal trip he's taking to Turkey. <laughs> and he's more important than us, so. Hey, it's fine. Freaking 30 out. minutes. <laughs> yeah, 30 minute wait, and then it's only an hour to scope here. Where are you gonna put the luggage? I don't know, dude. You might have to grab your own. Okay. Know. 